I got hit by a chair, I got busted open, had to have my head glued back together, still have a scar in the back of my head. I was like, it's the best thing ever. Moron. Simon Miller, the bald a-hole here, and it's the first of the month, well, the first week of the month, and you know what that means? We do a Q&A session a couple of weeks ago. You very kindly sent your questions in. That gave me a couple of weeks to think about some answers. Not true. I just grabbed loads of them because I like to react to them as organically, there's that word, as I possibly can. There's not really much else to say about that. Welcome if you're new. Hello if you're coming back. These words don't make any sense. Let's just answer your lovely questions. Anthony I, or maybe one, says, what is your current body fat percentage? It's a very, very good and interesting question. It's probably higher than you think it is, and it's definitely higher than I would like it to be. We did a video about this a couple of months ago now, maybe even longer than that. I am not ripped. <laughs> I've talked about this before. I'm not saying I'm a big fat guy. I'm not saying that, you know, I have like rolls of skin hanging over. I can see my penis. That's a lot of things people say when they're obese. They look down. Oh my gosh, I can't see my penis. But I am not walking around. I would honestly say, and I will get it done at some point just because I'm massively intrigued. But I would say I'm probably upwards of 16, 17%, maybe 15% if I'm lucky. But I, you know, it's it's one of those things that you see pictures, maybe I'm 15%. We'll go with 15%, but that I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But I'm certainly not, I get all these comments going, oh, you know, you must be on all this stuff. Look, trust me, man. If I had more confidence in myself, I'd whip my top up right now and show you. But it's just not the case. I've said it before, sometimes lighting, uh, sometimes you just have a good vein for that day in your arm, just going, whop. Maybe I've um, had some kind of caffeine or something, which is helping. But there are so many little things that can... Not trick, because I'm not trying to trick anyone, but it can, you know, I can't the right word, evoke a false sense of self, especially on Instagram, right? Because on Instagram, I'm even posting pictures when I'm mid-workout, so I've got a pump, or I'm posting pictures when I'm being a wrestler. So of course I've got a pump during that. So the, the first thing you do before you go through the curtain is you just pour water on yourself and you just do all the press-ups in the world to try and get as big as ripped as possible, because deep down we're terrified of doing it. Or at least I am. Who wants to walk around half naked while someone goes, Miller, you suck? Like, I know. You don't need to tell me. So I'll, I will find out what my body fat percentage is and we can go from there. I'm actually gearing up to lose some weight, which I'm absolutely, well, I don't like doing that. It's boring, isn't it? It's much more fun just to eat and get big, but it's that time. It's that time. But I thought it was a good question to start with. And Tanishi Famba just says, why are you so bald? Don't ask me. I didn't choose to be bald. Mother Nature just knocked on my door one day and kicked my ass. Did the same with my brother, same with my dad, same with my granddad. It just runs in the Miller family. Ashcon says, what are your pre-workout drills, including foam rolling and static and dynamic stretches? <laughs> what if I don't do them? <laughs> We're going to talk about them. I don't do that much warming up before I start lifting weights. I'll do 10 minutes on the cardio machine, uh, moderate intensity to make sure I get sweat on, get everything warmed up and ready to go. And then after my workout, I would do my d dynamic stretching. And I just do all the boring ones that you've seen time and time again. But in terms of keeping my body MOT, as some people say, I do DDP yoga three times a week when I can. I at least always make sure I do it once a week. And other than that, yes, I foam roll when I need to foam roll. And I just try and take care of myself as much as possible but you just never know what's going to happen i also do ywts or ytws for shoulders we talked about them before just google it we're not going to get into it now but these are the kind of things that i try and do and i warm up you know after i've done my cardio cardio i will do a warm-up set before i get into it instead of doing back for example i'm starting with deadlifts i won't just throw on 200 kilograms i may even start with 50 kilograms 60 kilograms you just get used to the movement again get my muscles and body and my brain in gear you can't just go one to 100 i don't find this especially as you get older, because you are probably going to injure yourself. And you probably won't be as mentally focused either. It just makes more sense like that. So if you're in a car and you go 0 to 60, also you're like, Argh! you know, you get that adrenaline rush. You want to get that adrenaline rush in the gym, but you want to make sure you're taking the right steps to get there. Christopher Blackwell says, what time do you wake up? Interesting question, because I was actually talking about this with someone the other day. I like to wake up at 6 a.m. every single day if I possibly can. Some days I'm tired and I'll sleep into about 6.37 a.m. But yes, I find that waking up, I'm one of those guys, right? This is what I was talking about. If I wake up at 6am, I feel like I have so much to do with my day. The business world, I suppose, doesn't really kick off till 9. So you have these kind of three hours where you can either, you know, take a step back and appreciate the world or get some extra work done or whatever you want to do. I think it's wonderful. I love waking up at that time, even when I'm really, really sleepy and really, really tired. I just think there's something really nice about it. So yeah, the longest I've probably slept in over the last 10 years is 8. 
<laughs> 8 a.m. I just don't like it. I'm weird. Joey Rivard says, how long does it really take to see results from walking out? Well, obviously the answer is how long is a piece of string? It's going to pertain to you and your genetics and what you're eating and what you're doing. But it took me, and we've done a video on this too, but it took me a long ass time. I started lifting weights when I was 16 years old. Best thing I've ever done. And I honestly don't think I saw results that I would be not satisfied is probably not the right word, but noticeable size for me until I was in my early 20s. Now, a lot of that is because I didn't know what I was doing, but it also just does take a long ass time, which is why you can't just be doing it for the progress, not for the progress, but for the, uh, the, the goal that you have in your eye. You need to have that goal, of course, because you need to stay motivated, but you've got to enjoy, you've got to enjoy the process is what I meant to say. You've got to enjoy the diet. You've got to enjoy going to the gym. You've got to enjoy whatever the healthy things you've decided to take on into your life, because that way, while it's cool, you're heading towards the goal, regardless whether you hit it or not, you found a way to improve your own, your own lifestyle. And even if you do hit your target, I tell you what will happen. You go, well, now I want a new target. That was always my thing. Is I want to hit this way and I hit that way. Well, what now? Well, I put on more weight and so on and so forth. So the answer is really, really long. Years, if we're being honest, years. Carl Wright says, will you ever do a Sekiro Let's Play on your channel? Absolutely not. I may do it on twitch.tv forward slash Simon 316, cheap plug. Uh, but I hate those games. Just let you know now. I think Dark Souls is trash. Tyson Harper, he's been listening because he says, why don't you like birthdays? I don't know, really. I suppose because I don't really want anybody to make a fuss over me just because I was born. It's not like I pushed a button in my mother's womb and she was like, sweet, here he comes. It was kind of, you know, one of those things. I'm very happy to be here and I feel very lucky to be here. And as a religious man, it ties into all of that. But I don't know. I guess I just don't need people having a fuss about me. And I don't like presents. I know that sounds weird, but I would rather people spent that money on themselves. I genuinely mean it because I'm not really that materialistic of a guy. And I hate saying that because it makes it sound like, oh, geez, geez. no, 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 screw that. It doesn't make me better. It doesn't make me worse. It's just how I feel. I feel like life is about experiences and life is about challenges and uncomfortable positions and blah, blah, blah. So there's probably some kind of connection. Wiley S says, can we talk about the green screen behind you and why that specific one? So many people don't realize it's a green screen. And they think I live in a PlayStation room. No, I'll tell you why I chose it. Because I kept changing the background. I got a lot of comments saying they didn't like the changing of the background all the time. So I was like, okay, I get that. People like continuity. And then when I started using this one, the video started sort of improving a little bit. I know there's no relationship there whatsoever, but I got a little bit, um, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word, but you know, when you get so focused on something, you don't want to change it in case you ruin it. What's that word? It's going to bother me so much. Superstitious. Stupid brain taking so long. I got superstitious with it. I like PlayStation. I like Sony. But if somebody said you got to pick an Xbox, a PlayStation, or a Nintendo console... I'd pick a Nintendo console. So why I didn't have a Nintendo backdrop, I don't know. But one day when I move out of my tiny house and hopefully get a house where I've got a little bit of office space, which is my dream, which is my goal, we will do it in a real living room or a real office. And hopefully that will kind of, you know, vibe the videos a little bit more. But baby steps, we'll get there. Carl says, Simon, bro, I love your videos and your positive message. Thanks, man. I've been lifting for little over a year, but I've been a musician for 20 years. And I would like to know what kind of guitar you prefer. Are you a Les Paul guy, a Stratocaster? telly keep the awesome videos coming big love from florida that always blows my mind He's flipping living in florida here i am in the uk well look my go-to guitars are always esps i'm absolutely obsessed with them i've got two real esps and three ltds which is like the we'll call it the budget range they're not budget they cost a fortune i do want a gibson les paul just because i think it's important to have one if you like guitars but again guitars cost a hell of a lot of money i don't think i'd ever get a stratocaster that's not really my thing but yeah if i could buy a gibson one day that would be that would be pretty cool but again it, it, it's a lot of cash but if i had to choose always esps luca says how much time of training passed when you first lifted 100 kilograms on bench press i mean i really don't know and it's one of those things that you don't want to overly focus on. Again, I don't want to repeat myself, as I always do anyway. But it doesn't matter if the first time you lift 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 kilograms, the cool thing is that you've done it. I bet the first time you went to the gym, you just lifted the bar, which is around about 20 kilos. So when you get up to having an extra 10, 20, etc., so forth on there, that's awesome. Don't get worried about the big roundup numbers. Like, isn't a 100 kilogram bench press great? Yes. But the last time I did bench press, no word of a lie, I did have 100k on there, but only because I had two plates and then the bar. So 20, 40, 60, 80 bar equals 100. I don't go crazy heavy. I'd always rather take my time, plus my shoulder's a bit dodgy, make sure I flex all the way to the top, fight it on the way down, and get those good repetitions in, because that is where true muscle synthesis happens. PC Crime says, what is your favorite Star Trek film? Mine is The Undiscovered Country. Do you know what? It's probably First Contact. I really like Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm not one of these people that can just say, oh, episode nine, series four. Like, I just watch it 
casually, I suppose, is the best way to put it. I really like that first contact movie with the Borg. I just think it's so well done. I think uh, Jean-Luc Picard is a cool captain. Plus, I really like Patrick Stewart. I could watch that film all the time. But mostly, I think all the Star Trek movies are good, even the crap ones, because now you can watch them go, oh, this is so bad, I get a kick out of it. Carl Reese says, imagine it was the real Carl Reese. That'd be amazing. What are your thoughts on SMN2? I thought it was great overall. Yet having listened to it more and more, I wish that Fade to Black had finally got on the orchestra treatment it so deserves. Um, SMN2 is obviously the orchestral album from Metallica, the second one, hence the name. I loved it as well. Uh, some of the new tracks they did on there, like Halo and Fire, I think Confusion is actually a better song on that album. I was a little bit disappointed that we did Mat uh, Master of Puppets and one, and I get it because it was meant to be an homage to the original, but I don't think those tracks are as good as what they did back in 99, and like your good self, something like Fade to Black would have pleased me, but I still think it is awesome. I was going to do a reaction uh, video on here, but I never got around to it, which is a shame. But yeah, just I'm obsessed with Metallica. I think they're the best. NYX Tech says, have you taken a chair shot? Yes, in reference to wrestling. Yeah, in my second match, I took a chair shot and it busted the back of my head open. Hopefully I'll be able to find the pictures, but I do not know where they are as I say these words. And because I'm a sick mother Hubbard, I got a kick out of it. Because I've been watching wrestling for so long, and I got hit by a chair, I got busted open, I had to have my head glued back together, still have a scar in the back of my head. I was like, it's the best thing ever. Moron. Justin says, hey, Simon, huge fan. I know almost everyone says trial and error. Probably what I'm going to say. But what is the closest way to know how many calories can to consume when trying to build muscle, lose fat, depending on your height and weight? Look, I don't want to... There's no point in me giving you an equation or saying, do this, do that. What I would always do is whatever you're eating now, if you want to put on size, add 100 calories. And if you want to lose weight, drop 100 calories, right? Then give it a week or two weeks, whatever works for you. See where you're at. And if you're not putting on any size, add more calories. And you're not losing any weight, take more calories away. I always think it's just best to do it really, really slowly, starting with whatever your diet is right now in this second. Because that's all you can do. And yes, that is trial and error. But there are, again, I could give you my diet right now and you may get really fat or I could give you my diet right now and you may lose weight. I don't know. And I know nobody wants to hear that. We all want the magic answer. We want the magic pill. But that's why I'm not going to BS you because it doesn't exist. Matthew says, would you rather be a hedgehog or a duck? Hedgehog. Orgolan says, favorite song in Hebrew, have an Aguila. Stacey says, you said you're in a band. Please elaborate. I'm in a band. They're called MG and the Juggernaut. Here's a little clip. <laughs> And finally, Jason says, are there any plans in the works for you to get back in the wrestling ring? Dude, I'd get in there tomorrow. I really, really would. But as you know, there's a global pandemic going on. There are a couple of shows I was booked on, but the rules that came into place in the United Kingdom meant they all had to be cancelled. Bless those guys for trying so hard. Uh, I'm desperate to get back to it. I really, really miss it. If you know about my wrestling journey, hopefully you understand the passion that I have for it. But there's also a lot of worse things going on right now. People have lost loved ones. People have lost their jobs. People have lost their livelihoods. Uh, wrestling was a huge passion of mine, but I have stuff like this and my what culture stuff to fall back on. So hopefully I'll be back there soon. I'm going to have to guess it's not going to be till next year, but man, would I love to be proven wrong. Uh, but I miss it, but all the wrestlers miss it. And I know that because I talk to them and I see them on social media. So fingers crossed wrestling will be back soon. But yeah, as soon as I can, I will. There you go. That's this month's Q&A session. If you liked it, cheap plug, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. We do these every single week and there's other rewards up there as well. Like the video, share the video, leave a comment below. Uh, make sure you hit the bell button, ding, ding. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because that number going up makes me feel good. Merchandise, simonmiller.bigcartel.com at Simon316 on Twitter and Instagram. And there's a video on the screen now that you can click. Thank you so much for supporting me as always. And I will see you soon. Maybe I will in the street. What?